So what is this OPC stuff anyway? Remember that OPC is a published industrial specification. Published. That means that uh, anyone can write an OPC server or an OPC client. Anybody can go to the OPC Foundation, become a member, and then download the specifications and write their own, uh, write their own applications. There is nothing that's proprietary at all. It's based on Microsoft's uh, ActiveX, COM, and DCOM. But there's also there are also implementations that use XML. And now with the OPC Unified Architecture, the OPC Foundation is also adding Microsoft's .NET. This is all based on client-server architecture. Now OPC actually stands for, well, it used to stand for Ole for Process Control. That was the original. That was the original definition. Now there are a whole bunch of uh, proposed uh, proposed definitions like oh please connect. Uh, I'm just kidding. Actually today OPC just stands for OPC. It's no longer just OLA because we see that there's XML. We're also using .NET and some binary communication. So it's no longer just uh, just OLA, and it's no longer just for process control. We see that we have OPC working on uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. In fact, there are some cities that are running. Uh, their traffic lights using OPC. Pretty cool stuff. The OPC Foundation has been working pretty, uh, pretty hard over time uh, on the different OPC specifications. In fact, we see that since 1995 when the OPC Task Force was formed, they've been coming up with new specifications and new releases every year, all the way from 1996 with the OPC Data Access 1.0 specification, all the way to historical data access, alarms events, and then in 2005 work began on the OPC Unified Architecture um, specification. And the most recent specifications are OPC Data Access 3.0, Historical Data Access 1.2, Alarms Events 1.1, and on and on and on. So when somebody says to you, I have an OPC server, you as the newly sophisticated and now educated consumer should be asking, oh, that's nice, but tell me, uh, what specification do you support? Do you support OPC Data Access, Historical Data Access, Alarms Event? What specifications do you support? Oh, and now that you're telling me that you support the OPC Data Access specification, what release do you support? Do you support OPC Data Access 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, all of them, none of them? What is it that you support? These are the question, questions that you should be asking your OPC vendors. The most popular OPC specification is the OPC Data Access specification, which enables applications to communicate with each other and pass real-time data. Every item has information on the value, the quality, and the timestamp. And of course, OPC allows you to read and write, subscribe and unsubscribe. But one of the most powerful features is its ability to browse for available OPC servers, see what OPC servers are available, and then go inside each and every one of them and do an auto-discover to see what data is available in there and what the type is. And all that is available through the browsing. You can ask several questions of an OPC server. Actually, you can ask many questions. Uh, for example, what is the latest temperature outside right now? What is the RPM of the feed water pump? Uh, how many cogs did we make today? So these seem like different questions, but they're really, uh, they really boil down to one single question, which is, what is the latest value that you have? And remember, the only question that you can ask is for that latest value. You cannot ask for previous value. In fact, if you want the value from yesterday or an hour ago or even a second ago, and if it's a previous value, you have to use the OPC Historical Data Access specification. OPC DA is used for real-time values only. In other words, you'll get the latest value that the OPC server has. So how fast is this thing anyway? Well, OPC servers can pass thousands of points per second. In fact, I've seen OPC servers pass hundreds of thousands of points per second. Well, that's fine, but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean much because what we find is that the bottleneck typically occurs elsewhere. For example, if you've got serial communication, you're typically going to see around 300 points per second. That's as fast as serial communication can make things go. Once it gets into OPC, of course, you can send out hundreds of thousands of points per second, but just to get the data into the OPC server, as long as you talk about serial communication, it's going to slow you down. If you've got noisy communication, if you've got latency, if you've got some inefficiencies, 
you're going to see a slowdown in the communication. That slowdown will come from the OPC server itself. In fact, OPC will not be the bottleneck. The bottleneck will be elsewhere. Nevertheless, the OPC server itself will seem a little bit slower. Of course, the computer hardware can be an issue, but you know, I always say if you're using a 286 and you're trying to run Vista on it and you've got four megs of RAM, well, maybe you should, uh, maybe you should upgrade. Just remember, some points update slower than others. For example, temperatures uh, and levels don't typically update nearly as fast as flows and pressures. And what we find is that different vendors communicate with the servers differently. So make sure you're talking to your OPC client vendor and find out how do you get the data? Do you pull for data or do you get it via subscribing? Are you doing device reads or are you getting uh, cache reads? What is it that you're doing to make that OPC server go faster? Or how are you enabling the op how are you enabling the OPC servers to uh, to optimize themselves? And in fact, go talk to the OPC server vendors and find out how do you optimize your communication with the PLC? How is that done? Do you um, do you get priority for writes or reads? Uh, can you do multiple reads at the same time? These are the questions that you should be asking the OPC client and server vendors because different OPC products have far far different performance. Thank you.